before and after. Yo, the n right here. That nigga Diddy cropped out and that. The n had you have to get a professional editor to crop the nigga photo like this. That's a different level of hate. Nigga. So, the generosity dropped a video called The Best Artist to Fall Off. Let's go ahead and see what he's talking about. This is going to be a very interesting video. Rare 19 minute The Generosity video. Everybody's been adding me in it. So, I'm assuming it's another banger from The Generosity. See what he's talking about. Um, nah, that nigga is, is hell. Nah, that's a fact. Longevity. A long duration of individual life. Some are long lived while others are cut short. Not only can this be applied to living, but also Ooh. in all art and entertainment. Ah, Others on. are cut short. Not only can- Yo, they still think about bunk beds, bro. Like, if you are, if you are a nigga who move a lot in your sleep, bro, like, goddamn, y'all ever, like, fall out your bed and then, like, you, you have a dream and you feel like you're falling out the sky, jumping off the battle bus and shit? This must be tenfold for this nigga. He feels the impact after. And this be applied to living, but also in all art and entertainment. Like, will this piece of work stand a test Thank of time you, to be remembered as great, or will it be put in a modern art museum? Only time can tell. And many music artists throughout all the years had faded away alongside time. It's crazy to think about, because some of these artists, or at least their songs, were all over the radio and playlists and constantly being replayed. But by next year, nobody's even having a thought about their music, let alone the artist. Their relevance was like- I don't like, know why I thought Link was butt-ass naked right there. Receiving a happy ending from a lady boy in Thailand. It lasts a good minute, but it finishes pretty quick. Don't judge my hobbies. Some get the stinky end of this deal by having short bursts of fame, then run straight into irrelevance for the rest of their, well, lives. And okay, right now, chat. Who's some who's some artists that you know for a fact fell off? Like, you know what I'm saying? Who who fell off? Like, we know huh, shit. Designer, Trinidad, James, Lil Pump, everybody from the 2017 XXL list, basically. Um, well, almost everybody from the Double XL. Uh, Silento, Roddy Ridge, Blue Rye, yeah, that's a fact. The Baby, Lil Xan, Fetty Wap. Your stepdad fell off. Was he? Was he ever? Was he ever on though? Like I, I don't even think he's on though. He's still underground with it. Um, Lil Skies, Six Nine, that's a fact. I felt, I felt it with Lil Skies when he was on though. You know what I'm saying? But hopefully, I'd be hoping some of them will come back though with some shit. Um, Ski Mask. I don't think Ski Mask fell off like y'all niggas be saying Ski Mask fell off. Now I fuck with Ski Mask heavy, but I don't think he fell off. I don't think Ski Mask was ever like on superstar status to begin with. But I don't ever think, I don't really think Ski Mask fell off in my opinion. The rest of the fame then run straight into irrelevance for the rest of their, well, I, do the emo. I don't even know the emo. That's the funny thing. I've never actually seen the, is there a say so emo? I've actually never seen. Yo, where the fuck are y'all getting this fucking emo from, my nigga? Rest are lucky enough to be one hit wonders, with their hits being so timeless that we never forget them. Like, who can forget a thousand miles by what's her name? I swear, every time that song she comes on, that song's iconic, place, though. Every bad thing that's going on in the world at that moment comes to a halt, and all of us sing along and if I come on into the sky, when you think time would pass me by. And you know I want the thousand miles. Doesn't need another hit. And Silento with Watch Me Whip, Watch Me Name. We don't talk about Silento. I mean, none of us are playing that song nowadays, but when it was out, it was big. Like all the kids were dancing that song, playing it everywhere. You couldn't escape it. And to show how much of a phenomenon this song was, it was played at the biggest award show in the world. The Kids' Choice Award. You can't get bigger than that. Uh, uh, Silento. That, that's a career peak for anybody. The impact of that song was See what I'm saying. So Literally. you know the fall gotta be equal to that. Cause after the song wasn't hot no more, the man fell off so hard, he murdered his cousin. That's tough. There was young Ma with He did worse than that. You know what I'm saying? He I mean, he he did worse than that. Ooh. This song will forever Yeah they hit but they broke though be a club hit Shame she didn't they, have another But at least some party or club They still play always they, they always be playing in the club though Well I don't know I'm not allowed in clubs so Estelle's American boy It hurts saying Damn, she Damn where did Estelle go I can't believe Estelle really stole it, that song though Like hold on I can't I can't Like to this day That shit's so fucked up How niggas be stealing songs though this is number one champion sound. Yeah, yeah Estelle, we about to get down. She really stole this song from from that from that Fortnite dude, bro. 
That's she really saw that song for the Fortnite dude. That's so we crazy. Got a number one victory it's royale. Yeah, Fortnite, we built to get down. One hit wonder, but the song is amazing. Also with a goaded verse from the GOAT. The song is genuinely perfect. Well, she ain't really a one hit wonder if you count the hits she made on Steven Universe. But forget everything. Oh, I she just made said. she was on Steven Universe. Think about the best artists to fall off. We think of the ones that had a big breakout song an album that made i'm like wait what's up i love pre fetty wap pre fetty wap people think this person will be here for the long run they will become a household name only for them to be in love and hip-hop a few years later i'm sadly talking about fetty wap fetty uh, oh nigga we do it uh, oh she was garnet she was really garnet yo that's so fire that's i did not know that. that's so fire that's why all of garnet songs are fire but man fetty wap bro had Fetty Wap had an amazing one, one of the most iconic runs in all the music, bro. I'm not gonna lose you, bro. That's tough, bro. Maybe won't you come my way? It really, it really used to be some shit like that. This person will be here for the Once long. Once you're on Bob, love hip hop is over. Household name, only for them to be in love and hip hop a few years later. I'm sadly talking about Fetty Wap. Fetty Wap, artist that comes from Jersey, represent and probably the most popular rapper to come from here, like. I was searching New Jersey rappers, and the second result is Fatboy S. Damn, so that means his name means Money Pussy. Huh. Crazy. Let's see, so we're, we're kind of lacking. <sighs> Fetty Wap in 2015 literally blew up the entire hip-hop industry with his sleeper hit at the time, Trap Queen, which came out a year prior before it even reached the Billboard charts. And when I tell you everybody was singing this song, and it was playing on every radio station, you couldn't escape it in a good way you can't tell me everyone and their doctors 20 i think it was i think it was 2015 jesus christ all you heard on the radio or you heard on the bus nigga at your school trap queen trap queen trap queen every freddie wop song bro and i get high with my baby i spend a mind in love with my baby yeah that's all you would hear my nigga at all times bro it's actually fucking crazy i don't think no artist has had that consistent run like freddie wop had bro vine was going wacky bro vine was there bro 2K, if anyone was in my ear balling, like, that room was crazy. Pretty old nigga reminiscing. Reminiscing, nigga, it was 20 fucking 15, nigga. How young are you, my nigga? Was you born in 2015? Just like you gonna be reminiscing on, on Yeet's run. Yeet is having an amazing run right now. It's not comparable to Fetty Wap's run. I ain't gonna lie, because Yeet's not gonna... I don't think Yeet's gonna fall off like Fetty Wap is, but... I don't think it's comparable in terms of running, though. Didn't know the opening six words of the refrain of the song. I'm like, hey, what's up, hello? And on April 4th, 2015, the song went number one on the Billboard, beating Pitbull's song. Now, when you beat Mr. Worldwide in the charts, you're Pitbull destined for fuck greatness. Off. And number one on Billboard is a crazy feat, don't get me wrong. But this dude still could have been a one-hit wonder. Come on, how many other people went number one only to be never heard of again? Like, who the hell is the baby? Who? But bro <laughs> proved everyone wrong. Cause one month after Trap Queen went number one, he released 679 Drake Edition. Now, I have my qualms with Drake, but I like the song. I like the song. Proving he ain't no one hit wonder, but at least two. But soon after that, he released his self titled studio. Yo, this is a ton on. Go back. But at least two. But soon after that, he released his. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was also making the songs he was featured in hit. Like nobody listened to Save That Money for Little Dicky, let's be honest. We're all listening for that hook. It seemed like this guy was unstoppable, and you could tell he felt that way too. Cause one month after he released his studio album, he released another album. The consistency is crazy. And to top it all off, it was a collab album with none other than French Montana. If you don't Nigga, did we ever hear? Did anybody ever hear that? When did when did that? Nigga, is that Cap? I don't remember. I don't remember. French Montana is probably one of the worst artists of all time. I'm not gonna catch you. The niggas talking about name five DDG songs. Nigga, try to name five French Montana songs without features. I don't think you can legally do it unless you look on Google, bro. You know what I'm saying? French Montana love rooted songs like I'm not gonna lose you. What the fuck did French Montana be? I don't even remember a French Montana Fetty collab, bro. 21 pilots beat or be in this. Mm, they might, they might. Who is French Montana? Um, the nigga on Unforgettable. 
how many times he's heard listen to this song and never heard the fucking French Montana verse. It's crazy. It's crazy. There's literally edits. There's literally song versions of this with his part gone. It's crazy, my nigga. I'm not going to to you. Might as well put the song in Sway Lee name. Yo. That shit. I never knew he was in this. The uh, poor African kids have to be around French Montana. <laughs> Album with none other than French Montana. If you don't know who French Montana is, it's that nigga that Diddy cropped out Mario in that Judah. one photo. And oh yeah, he did crop that nigga out of that photo. Mario Judah, photo fuck off. I'm not gonna if you me. don't know who French Montana is, is yo the nigga yo. And by the way, this wasn't an easy crop either. I want y'all to look at the before and after. Yo, the nigga is right here. That nigga that Diddy cropped out in that. The nigga had you have to get a professional editor to crop the nigga out of photo like this. The nigga didn't just like he wasn't to the right and the nigga cropped the photo. The nigga had to get an editor to make the nigga disappear out the photo. That's a different level of hate, nigga. To get the to get just these three niggas in the photo. That's crazy. Nigga put it at work. Yo, Chad, what do you do in that situation, bro? You took a photo with your homies, they post on Instagram, bro. Suddenly you're behind them and you're just gone. You're gone completely. You're not even in the photo no more, bro. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know if they're your homies, bro. Oh no, yo, yo, that, that's actually fucked up. I'm not gonna lie to you. A one photo, and for good reason. This man is not a good rapper. Never in your life have you been in a car or a function and someone says, Hey, put on that new French Montana. You never heard that. And if you yeah, have, fact. you need to find new friends. These are the people that are bad influences that your mom and dad were talking about. Go hang out with murderers and drug dealers instead. At least those guys will have a more positive impact on you than a nigga that willingly listens to French Montana. You have free will in this beautiful life you have, and you spend it on that? You can't trust them. Anyways, their album was called Coke Zoo, and I've it's never 13 heard of that. songs, and it's a two can of ass. Now, Fetty did have a better performance than French on here, obviously, but French had way more songs and verses than him, and overall, the album is just very bland. No so song never heard sticks. Of it. Or or stands out. It's just a nothing burger, bro. It has no replay value whatsoever. And after this project, his music slowed down on coming out, which is fine. He don't have to be like Young Boy releasing an album every three days. See, one thing I can say about Young Boy. Now, I'm not a Young Boy fan, and I don't listen to Young Boy like that. But the nigga Young Boy literally drops a song every week, my nigga. Like that might be the most consistent nigga I've ever seen in the fucking game. Like he drops a song literally every week, my nigga. I'm not gonna cap you. Some of it, my, I'm not gonna lie. Some of his fans be like, yo. Like, nigga, you dropping too much music. I've seen some of his fans literally say, yo, like, chill, nigga. That's like, that. Like, we don't need any more music right now, nigga. Like, some, I see some of his fans begging for the nigga to stop dropping music or just wait for a little bit before he drops music. That shit is crazy. In 2016, the next year, he had a good few charting songs he was featured in, and also his own single, Wake Up, peaking at 50 in the Billboard Hot 100. And during this period of time, it felt like the calm before the storm. Freddie was still in people's mouths, he was still performing sold out shows and still charting. He was still very much popular, but after 2016, he kind of faded away out of the public eye more yeah. and more. He has released projects since then, but none of them created any buzz because overall, all of them were pretty... Yeah. But also, there were no hits. See, Fetty Wap was very much a hit rapper, which is not a yeah. bad thing. It's just a bad thing when you want a fan base that would actually stay. And since he wasn't making any more hits, more people stopped talking about him. Plus, his new music sounds identical to the rest of his other music. I mean, you can say the same thing for other artists too, but Fetty's music also sounds dated. Like, he was a product of his time and didn't try any new sounds or styles with his music to catch up to his own contemporaries. Other than that 2018 6 9 song Kiki, he has. I be running that other day on the way. Nigga, we be in a car on the way along. Nigga, we be in a car on the way along. I forgot that nigga was on the feature. Niggas didn't see Fetty Wilds for years. He just randomly saw him on a, on a 6 9 song one day, bro. Oh, shit, bro. Oh, my God, bro. Up to his own contemporaries. Other than that 2018 6 9 song Kiki, he has kind of disappeared from the popular space of music. And since then, in late 2022, he's pleaded guilty in drug charges and he's looking at 5 to 40 years in prison. That's tough. But also during his fall off, Trap Queen is diamond. 10 million diamond units again. sold. So at least he will also have a legacy to look back on in hip hop history. Fetty Wap may have been a victim of falling down the stairs. Yams? Oh yeah, he did have Yams recently. Jay, y'all know the nigga was in jail when Yams dropped, my nigga? That's crazy. The nigga was in prison when Yams dropped. But be honest, or any of y'all listening to Yams right now, I know in around Thanksgiving like it was going viral, or any of y'all listening to that now, anybody in here? Song, the song was solid though. 
But like, I, I, I was talking about this song, but like, or have any of y'all listened to it like recently though? Come on, bro. With a mediocre at best discography to look back on, there's another artist that I believe fell the off. The way he made that, but on top, he did a remix to it. Goat Ye. Goat Ye was a solo artist. You can be addicted to a certain kind of sadness. It didn't have to cut me off. Oh my God, I hit that. I ain't gonna lie. Um, it's from fucking yo, this he nigga fell off, but on top. Goat yet. Yeah. Nigga, I know, yo, I guarantee none of y'all niggas knew who this nigga was by name, but the song just made you know exactly who I'm talking about. This nigga, I don't even, I have a theory that this nigga's not even a real person, bro. I don't even think, I don't even think this nigga's a real person, bro. He dropped this song and disappeared. Like, we, I don't think this is an actual, like, I feel like this is somebody who's just spawned in to test the waters on what worked and what didn't work, because I don't, haven't seen this nigga since, bro. We have not seen him since. Everybody knows the song. Nobody, no, bar any, barely nobody knows who made it. You know what I'm saying? Um, he's an AI. His stop his singles for his band. Oh, you mean that song? Now you're just somebody that I used to know. Somebody that she's. I'm about to go. That's a fire song though. That's a fire song. I ain't gonna lie. Goat Ye was a solo artist from Australia who started his pro music career in 2001 when he released his self-titled EP. Hey, DeGenerosi, what's going on, bro? Oh, what, 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 what was that, bro? And during these years, he sent his EPs to radio stations, building a name for himself up to the release of his debut album, Like Drawing Blood, in 2006. And this album is actually pretty good. The songs have a unique flow and groove to them, and uh, I'm terrible at describing music I like. The music sounds good to my ears. And apparently, others thought the same because this album was pretty successful in the indie space. It was critically acclaimed. It was voted best album of 2006 in a listener poll by Triple J, a popular Australian radio station the track hearts a mess was ranked number eight on the station's hot 100 of 2006 it also went platinum in australia like bro wasn't a nobody before his real big hit happened or at least not a nobody in aussie land it even won itunes album of the year in the uk mm, in 2008 bro was kind of a big deal and he would become an even bigger one once he released his second solo album in 2011 making mirrors where one of his lead singles somebody that i used to know well Blew the fuck up. I love this song so much. Now, I wish I could pick a different song. Twitch, I don't know what happened in the video, but he's okay. He's okay though. He's, so he's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. As my favorite, since I've listened to all of his solo music and also to see more cultured, I guess. But this is my favorite song from him. No matter how many times I listen to it, even after 10 years later, it doesn't get old. And the whole sound fact. of the song is unique too. Bitch. Electronic EDM dance music sounding like a YouTube gaming channel intro. You know, a lot of them sound dated too, but not this song. Never this song. And the song did get his flowers. A lot of them too. And after his world tour, all eyes are still on him, especially yeah. since he just won the record of the year at the Grammy Awards. So fire. People were waiting for more music from him. Except that ain't happened. Yeah. Bro went radio silent, and not in a people weren't interested in him no more kind of way. No, bro disappeared bro, from he disappeared, everywhere. Bro. Social media even started rumors saying he was dead, where he went out of hibernation just to tweet, nah, I'm alive. Then not long after the tweet, he posted a blog post saying he no longer will be releasing solo music and Goat Ye will be no more. Huh? Nigga, I'm telling you, he was an experiment, bro. The government put him into the community to see how he would work, and then he just took that nigga out, bro. Once he got a hit, that shit is crazy. This dude just released one of the biggest songs of the decade, and now he's quitting? Well, right. Why? That's like shooting yourself in the foot. What the heck? Well, one, in the post, he said he wanted to only focus working on music with his band, The Basics. By the way, he's in the band. I didn't mention that. And an inner- I'm not gonna lie, nigga. Fuck that band, my nigga. You have the biggest song in the world. Fuck that band, my nigga. Um, get Igor on Von Ooh, or damn, damn, that's that's a, that's a hard one. Uh, Igor's more aesthetically pleasing, the, the cover at least, so get Igor. Interviews, he talks as if he doesn't really want the insane fame in the first place, which is fine, I guess, if that's what he wanted. Plus, I bet he can have a steady living for the rest of his life on that one song alone. That's true. It's just miss potential. Because Goat Ye was genuinely a great artist who could have stayed for the long run instead of that one song being mostly his remembered legacy. Like, Bronte is a great song and has a greater music video. More people should see this. He still releases music with his band, The Basics, but I haven't listened. Damn, 
nigga been going hard with his band. He probably still eating, eating good off them checks, but nobody, nobody checking for that. I ain't listen to them yet. Plus, I've heard he's mainly the drummer. But Goat Ye is a great musician, so I wouldn't be surprised if I do like his band too. And maybe, hopefully, he could release more solo music in the future. All right, I'm going to stop glazing this dude and move on to the next man. Or baby. Da baby. Da baby. Look, I said this about the baby. I'll say it again. The baby isn't ass to me, bro. It, look, this is the, the this is the issue with the baby. Like, okay, the is, main issue that people have is the, with the baby is he just be doing dumb shit. Well, he used to do dumb shit. He don't really be doing dumb shit like that no more. And that he was too repetitive. I don't think, and I, if I'm being honest, Chad, I don't think the baby is bad. I think the baby's actually good at rapping. I know this is crazy to say, but I feel like the baby's good at it. Like, he's actually a good rapper. It's just that sometimes it's like, on a lot of shit, like, it's very, very repetitive. I forgot what song, what joint came after his Kirk album, but that album after Kirk was probably one of the most repetitive albums I've ever heard in my fucking life. I'm not even going to cap to you. But out of, like, the nigga is actually, like, uh, uh, like, he's, like, he can actually fucking rap, my nigga. It's just that the nigga, I feel like the nigga needs to stop working with Jetson made another one, my nigga. Because Jetson is making the same one. I ain't going to lie. Jetson is making the same one. I feel like the nigga low-key needs to stop working with Jetson. Jets oh, Lord. Jetson made another one because Jetson is making the same one. I ain't going to cap to you, but... Um, I mean, technically, he just made that 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 song called "If I Made So Hot Girl." Go say something. And, and the Reaper Reaper carrying right now. So I mean, I guess he guess he back on. But I don't I don't think he's trash. I don't really don't think he's trash. You a bitch, Jojo? See what like that? Sit like that, bro. I, that was that was unnecessary. He just be doing a whole lot of dumb shit sometimes. Rapper meme. Uh, car, he's mad popular. Not also, baby some car, of y'all might be thinking, I thought this was the best artist to fall off. Why he here? And yeah, he might not be nowhere near the best in anything, but I like Kirk and Baby on Baby. You know, I think he is a better. I, I did like Kirk and I like Baby on ever since Baby on Baby. Yeah, I, 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 I fuck with those, but everything after, I was just like, I, I don't know. It, it's kind of like when you eat the same thing every day, nigga. Like when you eat like spaghetti, you eat spaghetti every day, nigga. You gonna get tired of it, bro. Like. And, and if you don't change up the flavor in the spaghetti, bro, like, you're going to get tired of it. That, that's what it is. Discography than Fetty Wap, so. Now, although this guy's fall from grace is kind of recent, it's very evident that this man is 100% not the big star he used to be. Bro, in 2019 and 2020 was on top. He released three albums that made it to the top of the charts. Had hit after hit. Bro's song Rockstar with Roddy Rich was number one for seven straight weeks. He was nominated for six Grammys, endorsement after endorsement, TV performance after performance, getting away with murder at a Walmart. It seemed like nobody could stop this dude. But then this guy decided to be in a bunch of controversies. Assaulting airport kiosk workers, slapping Yo, a female man. fan for trying to take a picture of him. The worst one had to be when he kissed. He tried to kiss the uh, he tried to kiss the fan, and then he got curved. And then he did it again, and he got curved again. Y'all remember that? I do. Beefing with JoJo Siwa just because she's taller than him. Bro was just constantly getting in trouble. And the final straw was that 2021 Rolling Loud set where he just started saying the dumbest shit. Ladies, if you like to shove bowling balls and pineapple. <laughs> 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 yo, why I thought it was. Yo, why I thought. Yo, why I, th yo, why I thought that shit was actually him for a second. Oh, shit. Dumbest shit. Who threw that busted ass and did it? Ladies. If you like to shove bowling balls and pineapples up your pussy, put your cell phone flashlights in the air right now. And fellas, if you like sucking on balls, leave. Oh, man. I ain't with that gay stuff, man. Leave, man. man. I ain't no Frey Goshen. Leave that stuff at home. Yeah, dude said some homophobic stuff, and basically the whole industry turned on him. He lost a majority of his endorsements. Bro was pulled off of concert lineups, and overall, the public wasn't really messing with him no more. He even one time had to cancel his New Orleans show because it only sold 500 tickets in a venue that's supposed to seat 14,000. If that doesn't indicate a fall off, then I don't know what does. His recent album, Baby on Baby 2, only... Nigga. Does it indicate a fall off? Then I don't know what does. I forgot that nigga dropped Baby on Baby too. I'm not going. His recent album, Baby on Baby. I'm not going. I did not hear single single off this shit. I'm not even going to cap to you. It wasn't that bad. Anybody, anybody actually listen to this one? I didn't. I, I'm not going to. I didn't listen to it. I'm not going to lie. I like Baby on Baby too. Baby on Baby two wasn't great. He got the weirdest outfits. I was not listening to this garbage. It was cool. 
He dropped. I, I forgot all about this. B2 only sold 17K first week Damn. versus his 2019 2020 albums that would sell 150K, get a number one on the Billboard charts. It just seems like Bro really messed his own career up for nothing. And why you have more views than the baby? I do not have more views than the baby, my nigga. Some bro. people still might say he hasn't fallen off. Look at his Spotify monthly listeners. Bro still pulling big numbers. Okay. Remove the Dua Lipa song and that cuts off at least half of these listeners and Rockstar. minimum. Then remove Rockstar and that's probably minus 5 million right there. Most of this dude's listeners are only listening to his hits that most of the time he's only featured in. It ain't that hard to pinpoint this in Well to be fair, nobody's listening to Rockstar for Roddy Rich's verse. I'm gonna keep it a stack. I, I forgot Roddy Rich's verse on there, and I like Roddy Rich, but like nobody's listening to Rockstar for like the Levitating song. Everybody's listening to that song for uh, Dua Lipa. If you are listening to that song, that's not my type of song. But nobody's listening to fucking Rockstar. First of all, if you're listening to Rockstar in 2023. There's something going on in your life that I feel like you need to talk about with a therapist. But if you are listening to it, you're not listening to it for fucking Roddy Rich. I'm not going to catch you. Um, Info. And do I feel bad for his fall off? No. Bro did this entirely himself. Even on his new album, Baby on Baby 2, on his song, Socks, he says, Lost 20 million for keeping it real, bitch. I don't give a fuck about no money. Bro isn't even sorry. He basically said all the apologies he said in the past don't mean nothing. But who knows? Maybe he will make a comeback. He has a new song that debuted at number 92 on the Billboard Hot 100. Although the Repo Reaper on TikTok is the only reason his song is getting any streams. That tells you where his... Y'all think, think if the, re uh, the Repo Reaper stops using the baby sound, the song gonna fall off? I, I I I feel I feel like the song just has a song that TikTok like the song has a sound that TikTok just fuck with you know what I'm saying but the Reaper Reaper definitely needs to get a check you know what I'm saying the Reaper Reaper definitely got to get a check though I'm not going to capture you bro yes him and uh the baby double her Reaper Reaper was in fact carrying nigga ain't already banned bro I checked yesterday they banned the Reaper uh Reaper the Reaper Reaper you know what I'm saying they banned the Reaper uh Reaper yesterday it's tough I ain't gonna cap you know what I'm saying he has a second account though but he banned that nigga you know what I'm saying. I mean, the the reason why I think is because one of the TikTok CEOs got repoed by that nigga. So, um, I mean, you just got to get your gift back in whatever way you could do it. Career is at right now. All right, I got to move on from this dude and talk about a person that genuinely hurts my soul that I have to say this. That's tough. Chance the Rapper. Chance the Rapper started his career. Chance the Rapper wasn't. Chance the Rapper was solid when he came out until he, 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 he dropped that album down career with his breakout mixtape 10 day which was okay but then the year after acid rap came out and it was amazing in my opinion it's up there with hip-hop's best all-time mixtapes bro bar a unique sound to hip-hop with the fun bouncy and sometimes melodic tracks here the whole mixtape brings a supreme vibe to it that a lot of other projects don't bring also his ad libs going ah, 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 every track breathtaking revolutionary Acid Rap is just a great project that introduces talents to a much wider audience. Bro was destined to be big, especially upon the release of his album, mixtape? The Coloring Book. Yeah, In middle school, I adored too. this album. That's it, a, was, uh, it had the, you don't want no problems, you no problems with me. That, that was overplayed like shit, but it was on that album constantly in my rotation and personally i loved it more than acid rap i had every song on here on repeat and my favorite song on the album would change like every week my favorite is all we got no it's angels no it's no problems no it's juke jam this album is like perfect i mean i don't think it's top tier i wouldn't say perfect but it was it was a solid album. hip-hop music or anything but i have zero complaints about the album other than the mixing and all night but i can forgive it this album is great i love this album so much he deserved all the praise and awards that chance on get is. this album was a big part of my middle school days and chance was definitely one of my favorite rappers period during that time i was deeply anticipating see how he's hyping chance up and we're about to get to the plateau my nigga like it's about to be a very very sad conclusion y'all about to see big day holy guacamole yeah. This was a big day for me. I couldn't wait. I was ready. And on Friday morning, 12 a.m. on release, I put on my headphones. I could feel the sweat going down my gluteus maximus. I am so happy. Then I pressed play. And as I was listening to the music, Call the song felt ended. a little off. Yeah. <laughs> a bit different from his previous music. It was perhaps a little more...
Plus, it would actually be better, because with a nothing burger, you just get no nutrition or enjoyment out of it. The Big Day is like receiving a lobotomy. Like, first, this album had like eight writers and eight producers for each song. Two, the lyrics are just... Look at this! Peanut butter jelly with a baseball bat! Peanut butter jelly with a peanut butter jelly, it'll break y'all back! <laughs> <laughs> By the way, almost all the lyrics on this album are this corny and this trash. And when he's not talking about peanut butter jelly or God, he's talking about loving his wife. Now, I understand you. I love my... Yo. Oh my... Compared to the body is fucking wild. Yo, I would go that far. But this shit was corny, bro. This shit was so corny. I couldn't even make it through the entire album to this day. Nigga, I still not listen to that album in its entirety, bro. You love your wife, dude. I love your wife, too. But if you're not going to talk about your love for her in any kind of interesting way or do it in any other creative way other than just say, I love her and she's beautiful. She's my queen. Bro, I don't want to. I don't. Can you talk about something else? Can you talk about doing drugs again, please? <laughs> Every song has the same rhythm, tone, feel. It doesn't change or do anything interesting, which is even worse since this album is almost an hour and 20 minutes long. Honestly, this is probably the most disappointing album from an artist I loved I've ever listened to. Cause even with the albums I don't like from artists that I love, there's usually a good few tracks I would come back to, you know, that I like, but not this one. Not a single one on this album has replay value. And when I say these things, I don't mean for anybody to shit on Chance, cause I still think overall he's a great artist. That Kit Kat bar commercial is more iconic than that fucking last album. Bring me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. I think I've discussed enough in this video, although I definitely could make a part two to this. There's a few others off the top of my head that I could list, <clears throat> like Coldplay and Maroon 5. Like, how you go from this to this? Yeah, Coldplay, don't don't sleep on Coldplay though. Those, that Cold, we fuck with Coldplay around here. This, like seriously. Also, there's one more that fell off quality-wise that I can rant about for days on end. Who you talking about? But that's for another day. I feel like I've said- Who's he talking about that fell off quality-wise? It's a lot of niggas who fell off, fell off quality-wise. We can talk about it. Said my piece, and in conclusion- Melly, nigga, he's in jail. I kinda like Hot Shower. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's kind of grown on me. I'm sorry. Good video for uh, the generosity, bro. It just goes to show you, bro. It just goes to show you how, how, like, in anything, bro, like, nothing is, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you have the ball, you got the ball running, bro, and then this shit just gone. You know what I'm saying? Especially in music. I feel like it's easier to fall off in music more than anything else, bro. Like, if you're doing sports or regular content creation, like, I feel like it's less, like, it's harder to fall off than when you're doing fucking music, my nigga, because, like, it's so much shit with that, bro, and especially if you was, like, a hit maker and you're not making no more hits, niggas just say fucking, you know what I'm saying? But, um, good video from the generosity, you know what I'm saying? Um, plug, I'm gonna test those, don't test that. Fuck! Um, but if you're watching on YouTube, Twitch, be right, uh, in the description. I you, G. Alright.